Retro Rock plays everything. Hey there gamers, Retro Rob here, and today we're going to be looking at something different. Well, I, you know, it's not so different from the other things that I do, but what is different here is I have no idea what this thing does other than play games. It's, I don't know, it's, you can see it in there. It's shaped like a, uh, <laughs> a joystick and uh, it, it doesn't say anything really. It says 145 classic games. So I, it sometimes calls them arcade games. So I'm not 100% sure here whether this is a family clone of some kind or whether it's a Genesis clone of some kind or whether it runs arcade games. I, or it might just run its own thing. I don't know. So anyway, pretty excited. Uh, to cover this, it's too bad that it got crushed, but I'll still start with the front of the box. This is, of course, the retro game, Retro Arcade, with 16 bits of justice. Classic edition, mini TV game console. 145 classic games. So I'm a little worried that that might mean it's a Famiclone. That many games generally Famiclone. But maybe we'll get lucky, who knows. TV Arcade Plug and Play. It says arcade a lot on this, so hopefully we'll get some arcade games. Maybe, maybe? The right side of the box is letting its freak flag fly. Warning, do not let your children eat this. Bad idea. The right side of the box is still 16 bits. That's good to hear. The bottom of the box shows you that you need four batteries. Also, it's six volts. And it again warns you, do not let the kids eat it. This is kind of interesting because uh, this says not suitable for children under 36 months. And then here it says 13 plus. So I don't know. The top of the box features a convenient carrying handle, which I believe UPS used to just beat the crap out of the thing. <sighs> Deliveries suck. The back of the box. Professional joystick arcade game console with 145 classic games. Digital game system support full color screen. That's right, full color. Every color is supported. Easy to learn, a challenge to master, and endless hours of fun. One player 16-bit game. Four AA batteries. Let's unbox the beast. Usually I worry about wrecking the box, but you know, Postal Service did that for me, so I'm not real worried now. Let's get this thing open. There we go. And ah. there is a manual. Let's take a look at it. Retro Arcade, look at that manual, all in black and white, and not much in English here. Wait, 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 oh, yep, there we go. Um, yeah, there's not a lot about the games themselves, it's mostly how to set it up and use it. Bummer. Let's look at the device. All right, let's take a look at it, starting with the buttons. The buttons do feel like they're pretty cheap, but the plastics themselves aren't bad. They have a nice texture to them. You know, I'll, I'll give them slightly above average for this kind of device. It's really not that bad. They're definitely not arcade ones though, just so you know. Uh, there is a reset, a start, and either a light or what could possibly be a reset hole right there. On the joystick itself, the shaft of the joystick is plastic. Please note that it's not offensive plastics by any means. This is much better than many of them. And it does feel like it might have leaf switches inside. It feels very arcadey on the joystick itself. Uh, a little bit mushier than most, but not bad. Of course, there's the advertising. Still advertising. Retro Arcade 145 Classic Games. Great. Okay. Power on, off, there we go, on and off. It's very stiff. So I'm worried about whether that works. Might have been damaged, but it doesn't look damaged. 
sides are kind of boring. Um, the plastic's heavier than what we generally see in this kind of item. It, it actually has some heft to it. It's really not that bad. It has suction cups so that you can stick it to a table. That's always good. There is no screw in the screw hole, but it does have one. However, you can just use this snap to hold the batteries in. That's all good. Cable is about six to seven feet long. Cable construction is moderate to decent. It does have reinforcement here by the heads. I like that. Also has reinforcement here at the base. This is really, you know, the construction quality is really not bad. I would give it an above average. Seriously, I'm not kidding either. It's really not bad. All right, let's plug it in, try some games. That's a light, all right. Here we are at the main menu of the Retro Arcade 145 and 1. I'm gonna just scroll through here while I'm talking. Hopefully I won't say the same things twice. Sorry if I do. No script here, guys. Anyway, what this is, is certainly a Genesis clone machine. And it's got some pretty good games on it. I am going to note that you're going to see some Nintendo proprietary names on here. And you're going to go like, oh no, no, it runs more than just Genesis. But no, no, these are hacks of the original games. They are not the original games. They are hacks that were made to run on a Genesis. So they're not the real thing. They're not necessarily bad for that, but note that they are what they are. Hacks. And... Yeah, there's some pretty interesting games on here. And there does appear to be 145 different games. Although, you know, Rampart repeated. So there's probably a couple of repeats in here, but it's not an offensive amount of repeats. Let's go try some of the games out. And here we go with Comic Zone, which is an all time Genesis classic. Uh, as you can see, it looks really pretty good. Uh, remember, if you're using this with your LCD television to turn off the stretch function, otherwise it's going to look horrible. Uh, as far as the sound goes, there's a little bit of distortion in it. I am piping this sound directly out, so what you hear is basically what you get uh, from the thing. As far as the controls go, the joystick works really great. It feels really nice. Uh, the buttons are definitely not arcade, but... They are reactive, and they feel good. I wouldn't call them clicky. I'd call them bangy. They're loud. This is a great game. Can you get away? No. Oh, really? Come on. There we go. Beat up. Yeah. Great game, nice choice for the system. Let's go on. All right, here we have some Alien. Actually, it's Aliens 3. It's one of many, many side-scrolling, jumpy shoot 'em ups on this game system. I'm not terribly good at it, but it is fun to play, and the joystick yet again works just fine on this game. Come here, you little alien. Come here. Urgh. Die. What the? Look at him. Does he just not care about me? No, I want to go get that one. Oh, sh <laughs> Terrible. Oh, come on. <laughs> come here. I'm just waiting for it to jump out. They do, like, every time I start running forward, they just jump out and kill me. Barely anything left of me. Ah, I got you that time. Uh-oh. How am I supposed to get him? Oh, like that. Good. All right, let's rescue this guy. Crawl around a bit. 
Not getting me, you darn alien. Uh-oh. I'm almost out of time. What? What's up with this? What? Really? Ugh. I'm running out of time. Yep, it's over. Let's try another game. And this is Fire Shark, and I have not seen this game before today. Pretty cool. There's probably a video of me playing this somewhere. That's the worst part. I probably just forgot about it totally, but it's a pretty neat little game. Those of you who are fans of having a rapid fire button, there is no rapid fire button here. Uh, but, you know, you can play the game like it was meant to be played, and that's pretty good. Or, well, mostly like it was meant to be played. Of course, the Genesis did indeed have a D-pad. Not a big old joystick, but it plays great with a joystick. It's really nice. Yeah, pretty cool. Cool little game, nice inclusion, uh, something you don't see real often. Let's go on. Or let's just shoot these guys. No, really, we should go on. Here we have Insector X, which is a game I used to play on the Amiga. I recall I thought the graphics were so amazing. Now, sometimes they would dumb them down for the Genesis, so maybe they're not as good on this platform as they were on the Amiga. Or maybe, you know, time hasn't been that kind. Hard to say, really. But it's a fun example of this genre. There is quite a few other side-scrolling shooter type of games available on this system. So if this isn't your cup of tea, and side scroll you shoot them ups are, then there should be plenty for you to like here. Let's go play something else. Here we have Super Mario Brothers. Uh, no, it's not. It is a hack. Not sure what game they hacked to make this, but the physics are pretty heavily off on this. Uh, sometimes you end up going through a block uh, sometimes the jumps go too far or just yeah see see how it just kind of I don't know it, The controls aren't right on it It looks okay Is that Wario? Why is he in yellow? Or is, maybe that's because he's got yeah, he's got fire. Okay got it uh, Yeah Not not terrible, but not amazing either here we have Pac-Mania. I think the Genesis version is really a good one. The graphics are really nice on it. The game controls properly. Big pluses all across the board on this particular game. And I really like it. It's fun stuff and I'm glad they included it on this. Hmm. He's kind of mesmerizing, isn't he? Here we have some Super Street Fighter 2, and you'll be happy to know that this uses all six buttons. Not a problem throwing that fireball. Come on. Hmm. Flash kick's easy enough, though. And you are down, Chun Li. Oh, you're not. Oh, ho, ho. no, no. That is it. There we go. She's down. Almost got my butt kicked on the very first person. <sighs> not a great Street Fighter player. This is Lotus, and it's one of several racing games on this system reason I'm showing you this is because it's one of my old Amiga favorites and the other reason is that unlike many racing games uh, which over the years have become basically unplayable because we're used to a different physics standards these days this one holds up really well it is definitely still a very playable game today and graphically though it isn't top-notch anymore it is still somewhat attractive it really is fun to play, even now. Decent racing game. And these controllers work great. 
So what is the verdict on the retro plug and play? Well, construction quality is pretty nice. The controls worked well. I liked it. The little suction cups on the bottom of the unit, they actually work to hold the unit in place. The games are pretty decent. I mean, they're all Genesis games, but there's a fine selection of different games that you can try out on it. Hey folks, just adding a couple things in that I forgot to put in the video, who knows why. First thing is that there is no stereo sound out of this device. It only has one RCA jack for audio, so that's something you need to know. Another thing is there are no save states or save games in this. Uh, it doesn't matter that much because the Genesis didn't have a whole lot of games that saved unless they were adventures, but something to mention nonetheless. So. At $25, I think I'm going to give this the first thumbs up I've given in a while. Good job. Not bad at all. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.